All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rubia and Dave. we <laughs> He's very kindly taken time out of his weekend. This is a Saturday, probably not when you're watching this video, but it is today. To come down to my studio uh, to check out the Boss SY1 synthesizer pedal. I already did a video of this, but some of you might not know, there's a little switch on the back that switches it between guitar and bass. So did you switch that switch? I did switch that switch. The switch has been switched? Yes, it has been switched. So the guys at Boss, Matt, the legend that is, was like, why don't we just get Dave down and let him you know, mess around with it, see if he comes up with anything cool? Which is what this video is. So essentially, Dave's gonna play, I'm gonna mess with the SY1, we might have a couple of drum loops in a bit, and that's basically what this video is. So if you're a bass player looking for a synth pedal, maybe this video will help you. Maybe, who knows? I actually used the original, what was it, the SYB? The gray with the red writing one. Yeah, that yeah. one. Um, I really should know the model name of that because it was on my pedal board for absolutely ages, like years and years. Uh, and really, the only reason it's not on my board is because I have the, um, the MS, one, the MS3. Oh yeah, Achilles. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but it'd be interesting to see because I've not played through anything really new from Boss and the synth depth. Yeah, yeah. So, well. Yeah. If you're new to this pedal, it has 11 different types of synth style sound uh, on the type knob here, as you can see in close-up. Then you've got 11 different variations of each of those sounds, so there's 121 different variations of synth sound in this pedal. Right. Um, which is a hell of a lot. We've got an expression pedal out running to an expression pedal on the floor, so Dave can do some sweeps. Uh, and then you've basically got control of the rate and the depth of like the modulation or whatever the sound of the synth is, and then you've got your direct and your effect signal. Cool. Um, what's your signal chain? Signal chain is this beautiful Music Man Stingray. This is one of the new ones, uh, which I think came out uh, at the start of this year, yep. I think, uh, where they've tweaked the preamp and made it lighter. It's actually really like this thing. Mm. Um, and it sounds really good. And that is running into a dark glass uh, which one is it? The V2? It's the, it's the V2 M M900. M900. And uh, we've got the B7K preamp on and we'll be able to switch that in and out. Um, we also have a DI just going straight into the Apollo XP mm. uh, with the slightest bit of compression, I think. Is that right? No, I took it off. Took that off. Mm. No compression. Uh, and that's it, really. So we'll be able to swap between the DI, blended DI with the amp mm. and also... Um, the clean amp as well. Uh, currently, I think the microtubes is on, uh, so yes. right now it'll sound a bit filthy like this. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Which is just bass and amp and bit of the DI mm. blended in. Uh, no synth pedal yet. Yeah, and I think the format for this really is I'm just going to play with the pedal and you're going to play with the bass. I am. I mean, full disclosure, I'm not in a dubstep band or anything like that which might be where this pedal is most home mm. um, I'm kind of more into the, the heavy stuff mm. so I just really want to see I don't know maybe my playing style will change as we're playing around with the, with the pedal but I'm assuming that I'm going to want to do sort of filthy fuzzy big wall of soundy tones mm -hmm. uh, and horrible squealy sweepy noises sweet so that's that's what i'm expecting to well achieve. without further ado dave let's crack on okay so let's start let's go right back over to the start how about that and i'm going to 12 everything 12 okay so that's before i love that yeah
it tracks pretty good. It does. There is there's like a almost like a decay time mm-hmm. after you play, so it's it tracks well. Uh, like for for all the fast kind of like, but you can hear that gargle afterwards. Mm. Um, I'm not sure. I guess that's just characteristic of a synthesizer. It's kind of it's messing around with the waveforms, isn't it? Yeah. So it, it's by nature, I guess, it's going to do a bit of that sort of warbling, and that's part of the characteristic of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it tracks fast. It's just getting used to that kind of decay on it. Um, there's no gate on it either. No. But it might be that you could get some interesting things blending it with a gate as well mm. so that you can chop out those things and be a bit more staccato. Mm. Um, I think it, it may lend itself more to doing more of the sweepy kind of... <laughs> kind of thing. In case anyone is interested, it's the lead type and we're on variation three. Uh, everything else you can see. So... I guess we're going to just have to jump between a few of the variations then change type because there's so many yeah. that, you know, and we'll probably get carried away and find some sounds and be like stuck on that for ages. Yeah. Anyway, let's carry on. <laughs> it sounds like a Casio keyboard MIDI horns. It does a bit, doesn't yeah. it? And and somewhat, I don't know why, but slightly deep purple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. so that's the lead one. Okay. There are two types of lead here. So this is the second lead type, variation one. Uh, So Nintendo. I feel like I'm on a, on a, a level of I don't know, Street Fighter or something. I know what you mean. Lead type two. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Onwards. <laughs> So obviously these are running with a bit of drive in the signal, which I actually think works better, particularly for the lead patches. Yeah. And I also think it's going to work better on the on the bass patches. But before we get to that, we've got pad. So should we should we take off the microtubes? Yep. So so if, if you bypass the pedal, this is the uh, clean bass signal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here we go. This is pad variation one.
It feels like some sort of like funeral music. <laughs> We're here today. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like organ and like nice chords and feelsy. Yeah. <laughs> Had variation nine. Well, I think the best thing for us to do is maybe do three to four sounds per type because we can't do 121. Okay, so that was pads. Let's move on to bass synth. Now, before we say do anything, I think we need the distortion back in. So this is without the synth SY1 in. <laughs> I said we were going to do three or four, we ended up doing all 11 then. <laughs> um, it was the base setting though, so it yeah. makes sense. Yeah, okay, so next up we've got uh, the STR type, which is string synth. Um, again, no idea how this is going to sound. Just to note as well, on the left hand side of the pedal you've got a dual concentric pot between effect and direct. I've got all the effects in and I'm blending in sort of just under halfway of the drive signal so you do get some bass, so you can hear that just so you know. Um, right, type one string. That's a cool sound. Yeah, that's cool. I guess obviously because it's designed to be bass and guitar, like some of the sounds are going to lend itself more to bass than guitar and vice versa. So, the thing um, with this is like because of the form factor, you've got 121 sounds, you can get lost so quick with a pedal like this. And I, I suppose the point of this video is just well, when Dave ends up playing and, and we sit and listen, it's because that's one of our, I suppose, our ears go, oh, that's a cool sound. And hopefully that'll help you guys if you've got this pedal and you're a bit stuck. It might even be that this is kind of, it's one of those pedals that is there just to make a bracket. You know? Yeah, um, I can already hear how some, particularly that last string sound, you could totally use that in a section. Yeah, with some, some lead reverb lines. and yeah. delay and let it kind of swim around a little mm. bit. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, so that was string. Next up we have organ. Okay, this is organ. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be done, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that was uh, organ type one. Let's jump ahead to four. And 
type uh, 8. Type 11. I think we should simulate this going through an amplifier like you would in a studio. I, you know what I like about it is that, you know, you flip the switch and obviously that's to, for it to pick up a different frequency spectrum, isn't it? Yes. Because it's a low tune instrument. But you still get that set, like I remember when I did it with the guitar, it completely takes over and it's like, that's the sound of an organ. I really like the way that they've, that, that you can meld the sounds together like that, super accurate, which I enjoy. And I, because I, in my opinion, with an instrument variably difficult to track all the time, yeah. um, they've done a really good job. Next, Bell. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I'm going to take back off the distortion. This evening on the Tim Mike <laughs> Show. <laughs> it totally was. <laughs> Let's go all the way to 11 bells. That was like pensive <laughs> video game music, like some sort of child's game where you're like waiting for a boss or something. Yeah. It's weird because it's it's changing the notes as well, so it's it's harmonising, right? So if I... I quite like it. I think it's quite cool. Yeah. In the sense that it, it, it it's harmonising, and some of the chords you're playing give really nice voicings. Okay. We got more organ. We got organ. The two types of organ now. So let's. Uh, it's one Hammond. So we got twenty-one organ sounds. I'm wrong. This is the sound effects one. I was like, what right. kind of organ is that? That and that makes way more sense. Yeah, no, we've got two types of... So we've got 21 different sound effect patches in here now. Right. So we're going to find some mental stuff in here. That was that was already getting pretty, uh, pretty mental. All right, let's move. Let's try number five. <laughs> I mean, 
that's the sort of thing that I think having the expression pedal is almost key to getting the most out of that section and for it's sure. definitely the sort of thing that you'd have to dial in specifically for a certain section get the tempos mapped so that you're oscillating at the right times um, interesting I think dialing it in it's the sort of thing that live people would be like who's doing that <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know the, the guy stood in the background playing the bass can just be like yes that's the thing about it you almost kind of go I would put that on my pedal board and I'd totally use that for one section or two sections of the whole set yeah, and it almost feels to me like a bit of a shame that you've got all that stuff in there but really that's kind of how I see this pedal being utilised yeah, and again it doesn't have a way of recalling the you settings you can't program it yeah. and because every minute different and there's so many things in there and every minute change is going to react differently and I imagine through different bases it's going to react differently you know, mm. this is fairly high output I've mm. got the preamp set flat but um, you know, maybe through my my passive signature bass, it would be reacting different anyway. Mm. Um, but it does. It's one of those pedals that, you, I mean, unless you're finding a sound that is almost your fundamental tone that you always use, because that's that's what you're going for. Mm. Then really, this pedal's for people that have got a pedal spare space spare on their board, mm. and they want something that they can just drop in once or twice in a set mm. and uh, and just do something really unique. Yeah. Um, I don't see it used in any other kind of middle ground. It, it feels like it's either you get your synthy bass sound and that's what you go for mm. and you leave it as is or you've just got a couple of little sounds that you that you just kind of drop in and out of the set. Yeah, I no, totally agree. Well, that was the first a lot of sound effects patches. So we're on to the penultimate type. So this is sound effects round two. <laughs> That's a lot of that's a lot of effect. That's a lot of effect. Um, all right, so we're on to the last one. This is probably this is going to be fun. This is sequencer. So obviously, I don't know how many step sequences it is, and I don't know if the type knob constitutes to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven steps. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, the the it might be that. so far. Yeah, the expression pedal seems to be taking over a lot of that stuff. So mm. things like rates and mm. stuff like that is kind of what the expression pedal is doing. It's not. I I, I don't know whether. For the most part, that seems what it's, it's been doing. It's mm. not like it's changing the blend mm. or the dry signal or the wet signal. It seems to be changing that kind of uh, rate of effect. Yeah. Um, so maybe that it, it's going to be doing that. It's going to be changing the number of steps. Okay, well, let's check it out. There are two different levels of sequencer types. So we've got another 21 sequencer things. Right. So this is the first round. Okay, here we go. Thank you. 
there are definitely sounds in there that I could you could totally like I'm thinking about like when Tosca when we go on stage or something and we do all the weird stuff that happens yeah. there's yeah. a couple of things in there that you're doing that it doesn't need to be to tempo but that idea of like whirring that speeds up and slows down stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be really dramatic at the beginning because um the depending on obviously the amount of dry signal because we've got the wet all the way up mm. the root note wasn't coming through which leads your second delayed note mm. of, the, of the sequence being the root so trying to get the timing right can be a bit difficult mm. um, so it, it does you either kind of have to get used to adjusting to it uh, to compensate play the note before you want it to come through mm. um, or use it in as you say more of a hectic random way it's certainly random yeah okay on to the very last of the types this is the final sequence a lot 1 to 11 so here we go <laughs> Totally just vibing. Yeah. You know what that reminds me of? Thinking of an answer for, like, catchphrase. Yeah. <laughs> when you get given yeah. a catchphrase and you're like, mm, what's the answer? That's the yeah. sound. Uh, you don't, I mean, you don't really need to play anything. No. You just let it do its thing. Okay, let's just randomly select number five. <laughs> By far and away the closest to a video game soundtrack sound. That's like Thunder Force or like <laughs> some sort of old shooting spaceship game yeah. on like an, an Amstrad or yeah. like Master System. Yeah. Crazy. That is cool. Okay. Randomly selecting number seven. <laughs> That was variation 11 of type 11. Wow. You know, we've just breezed over the pedal, and the, that was the, basically the aim of this video. Because it's, it's it, I've already done a demo, we all know what it does, at least if people have watched this channel, but I think for this it was a case of, what can you do? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess the purpose of the video is if you don't live by a guitar shop that stocks bus or, or whatever, and you're intrigued, it kind of does that. Yeah. So if that feels like it's going to get you inspired to come up with some cool bass lines and interesting noises, or it's just a good studio tool and that's your thing, uh, then hopefully this video is kind of giving you a window into the sorts of things you can yeah. create with it. It's definitely it's a creative pedal. It's not a this is a great tone. This is a you know it's it's a creative tool, isn't it? It's, yeah. I think you could legitimately, and I think a guy called Muck Rocklin did this for the launch video. I think you can legitimately do a full like 80 synth arrangement with just a pedal because that one of those last sequences on the bass was giving you a drum beat and a yeah. bass line yeah. plug the guitar in put all the strings and synth and, and also, you can turn you know, and make a full a, tune a looper even you yeah. know if you've mapped out what sounds you're going to use um, you could loop certain sections be a bit more simplistic in what you're playing mm. change the level master mm. level so you can kind of get your mix and then just keep stacking up loops um, yeah well there you go I feel like after this, after another sort of close look at this pedal with you, I feel like it's I've landed on 
If you want to make 80 synth compositions, you just need the pedal, bass, and the guitar. If you want to use it for really cool mood setting sort of sounds and sound effects, it's incredible. It's got mm -hmm. loads, provided you've got an expression pedal. For me, the like the organs and the string stuff are kind of like I'd probably use them a little bit here and there for something, but I probably wouldn't focus this pedal on those kind of sounds for no, me. No, again, I don't know whether with less of the mix, more of the dry in there, mm. um, and some like you know chorus and delay and reverb, mm. whether just swelling in some of those. Mm. It's it's so specific, but I definitely think one thing I would say is if you are going to get it get an expression pedal if you haven't got one because mm. really the expression pedal is the bit that's opening up the potential of the pedal um, and I think without the expression pedal it, you, you might feel a bit locked and mm. restricted yeah um, that's a very fair thing to say Dave well there you go there is a, another look at the SY1 but with bass this time thank you very much Dave for coming down and hanging out if you do want to get one of these pedals or you're interested I'll, I'll link it all up in the description box but yeah, thank you to Boss for sending it over again. Thanks, Dave. Uh, I've been Rabir. Dave. We'll see you later. <laughs>